chapters eight, chapters 19 and 20 of a wayside school gets a little stranger. Here we go. Ooh, bringing back the cows. Let's see what's going on. Chapter 19, time out. Miss Zarves taught the class on the 19th story. There is no 19th story, and there is no Miss Zarves. You already know all that, but how do you explain the cow in her classroom? Miss Zarves drew a triangle on the blackboard. A triangle has three sides, she said, then pointed to each side. One, two, three. She drew a square. A square has four sides. One, two, three, four. She walked around the cow to the other side of the board. She drew a pentagon, a hexagon, and a perfect heptagon. A heptagon has seven sides, she said. Ms. Zarves was very good at drawing shapes. When most people try to draw heptagons, there is always one side that sticks out funny. But Ms. Zarves' heptagon was perfect. Every side was the same length and every angle the same degree. It was a great talent, but nobody appreciated her. Nobody appreciated anything she did. It was like they didn't know she was there. She counted the sides on the heptagon. One, Two, three, four. Oh, said the cow. Ms. Zarves dropped her chalk. She glared at the cow. I hate this, she shouted. It was a brown cow with a white head. It's all right, Ms. Zarves, said Virginia, her best student. I'll get the chalk for you. No, said Ms. Zarves. Leave it where it is. The cow made me drop the chalk. The cow should pick it up. Her students gaped at her. I will not continue, said Ms. Zarves, until that cow picks up the piece of chalk and draws an octagon on the board. She folded her arms across her chest, stared at the cow, and waited. Ray raised his hand. Yes, Ray, said Miss Zarves, arms still folded across her chest. Uh, cows can't pick up chalk, said Ray. Miss Zarves sighed. <sighs> I know, she said, and I can't teach a cow, excuse me, I can't teach with a cow in my classroom. No one had ever seen Miss Zarves so upset. She usually had a pleasant disposition. It's okay, Ms. Zarves, said Virginia. I don't mind the cow. You get used to it after a while, said Ray. What cow, asked Nick. Oh, that one? I forgot it was there, Ms. Zarves smiled. <sighs> she knew her students were trying to make her feel better. Other classrooms have goldfish or hamsters, said Virginia. It's really no different. No, said Ms. Zarves. I won't have it. All my life, I've tried to be accommodating. I've never been one to complain. And what has it gotten me? A cow! She shook her head. When I was a little girl, my friends never did what I wanted to do, she said. I always had to do whatever they wanted to do. And my teacher never called on me in class. She always called on the kids who just shouted out without raising their hands, even though she said, she said she wouldn't. She'd say, I won't call on you if you don't raise your hand. But then she always did anyway. But I was a good girl. I never shouted out. And she always did things alphabetically. So I was always last if there was time for me at all. My parents were too busy for me. They were always dressing up and going out to fancy parties. I had to tuck myself in at night and wish myself sweet dreams. She took a tissue out of her sleeve and wiped a tear from her eye. Still, I always tried to keep a smile on my face. Well, not anymore. The days of walk all over Ms. Zarves are finished. She threw open her classroom door. The squeaky wheels Get, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. That's an expression. What are you going to do? Asked Virginia. 
I'm going out there, said Miss Zarves, and I'm not coming back until I get some grease. She stepped outside. She decided she'd go right to the top. So she headed down the stairs to the principal's office. Joy and Mauricia were coming up the stairs. Todd is uglier than stupid, said Mauricia. You're crazy, said Joy. He's stupider than ugly. Ooh, teased Mauricia. I'm going to tell Todd you think he's cute. Ms. Arf stepped in front of them. What are you children doing out of class, she asked. I didn't say he was cute, said Joy. He's just not as ugly as he is stupid. That means you think he's handsome, said Mauricia. Are you going to marry him? I asked you a question, said Ms. Zarves. Ugh, gross, said Joy. I'm a teacher, said Ms. Zarves. That means you are supposed to listen to me. Joy and Mauricia walked right past her. Ms. Zarves sighed, then continued down to Mr. Kidswater's office. She took a deep breath to steady her nerves. She was about to knock, but then changed her mind and just marched right in. Hey, Kidswater, I want to talk to you. The principal was making a rubber band ball. Do you hear me? asked Miss Zarves. He opened his desk drawer and looked for some more rubber bands. If you don't answer me right now, said Miss Zarves, I'm walking out the door and never coming back. Mr. K pressed the buzzer on his phone. Bzz. Miss Knight, you need to order more rubber bands. That's it, said Miss Zarves. I'm leaving. Goodbye. I quit. She walked out of the school and took a deep breath of fresh air. Please don't go, Miss Zarves, said a voice behind her. Startled, she turned around. We need you, said a bald headed man who was standing between two other men. Both had black mustaches, and one carried a black attache case. The bald man didn't have a mustache. Can you see me? She asked. Yes, of course, said the bald man. And we appreciate all your hard work. You do? All three nodded very sincerely. Ms. Zarves was touched. I've been teaching for 30 years, she said, and nobody has ever said that before. Well, it's not easy being a teacher, said the bald man. I don't get any respect, said Miss Zarves. People treat me like I'm a nobody. It's not easy being a teacher, said the man with the attache case. You have to work long hours for very little money. I've never gotten paid, said Miss Zarves. And this is the first time in 30 years I've ever left the building. It's not easy being a teacher, agreed the other man with a mustache. Even the book I'm reading to my class said Ms. Zarves. The author makes fun of teachers. It's a tragedy, said the bald man. Then why do, then why do it, asked Ms. Zarves. Why teach anymore? I could quit and nobody would care. The children need you, all three men said together. Ms. Zarves sighed. <sighs> I like to teach, she said. I really do. I love the children. It's just... She stopped and wiped her eyes. The man with the attache case opened it. He took out a handkerchief and handed it to Miss Zarves. Thank you, she said, blew her nose, then gave it back to him. He placed it back in his attache case. Can you at least get the cow out of my classroom? She asked. The bald man smiled. I'll see what I can do, he said. Miss Zarves smiled as she slowly shook her head, then she turned and walked back into the building. Chapter 20, Elevators. Mr. Kidswater's voice came over the loudspeaker. Good morning, boys and girls. There was the usual pause. I have a very important announcement, said Mr. K. Elevators have been installed in Wayside School. For a second, the kids on the 30th floor were too stunned to speak. Then everyone went crazy. 
Yahoo! Yelled Sherry. Hot diggity dog! Shouted Damien. Everyone was yelling and jumping. Zippity doo da! Shouted Mrs. Drazil. Cheers could be heard coming from every classroom in Wayside School. The higher the classroom, the louder the cheers. Now, before you all rush out and use the elevators, said Mr. Kidswater, I want to talk a little about elevator safety. I don't want the same kind of chaos that we have on the stairs every day. I don't know how many times I have to tell you. When you go up the stairs, stay to the right. When you come down the stairs, stay to the left. But still, everyone keeps bumping into each other. Well, that won't happen on the elevators. I have personally designed a special safety system. There are two elevators. One is blue, one is red. When you wanna go up, you take the blue elevator. When you want to go down, you take the red elevator. It's that simple. It can't go wrong. The blue one only goes up, and the red one only goes down. By the way, has anyone seen my coffee pot? And so, at last, Wayside School got elevators. A blue one and a red one. They each worked perfectly one time and never could be used again why could they never be used again think about it think about that think about it all right quiz below baby